We are honored today to have with us Dr. Alfred Knudsen. He is senior member of the Institute of Cancer Research and Fox Chase Distinguished Scientist at Fox Chase Cancer Center. He is an AACR honorary member. Thank you for being here. You've just become an AACR honorary member and you've won numerous awards and recognitions throughout your career. So let's start at the beginning. How did you get into the field? It's a somewhat long story, <laughs> but um, basically when I was young, I was very interested in genetics and uh, then got into medicine. <laughs> and because of my interest in genetics and development, uh, I got into pediatrics. And that ultimately led into working with children with cancer. And at that point, my interests in cancer and genetics came together. And that's been a continuing interest of mine ever since. What are the accomplishments that you are most proud of in your career? Well, I'm best known for what people call a two-hit model for the origin of cancer. The idea was that um, people had wondered how many events are necessary to make a cancer. And uh, I wanted to know what's the least number it could be. Because uh, basically, I thought I had to have a simpler uh, model. And that childhood cancers would have to be simpler than adult cancers. And if a child was born with a cancer, it would mean probably the simplest you could ever get. But we were pretty sure that you couldn't get cancer by having one mutation. Otherwise, then we would all be getting cancer all the time. And uh, my experience in pediatrics had exposed me to the tumor of retinoblastoma. And it was already known that some cases were hereditary and some were not. So this seemed like the best tumor to look at because um, the smallest number of events would be two. And the question is, could this tumor sh uh, show us that two was sufficient to do it? Um, so what was it like to develop this two-hit model almost 15 years before molecular technologies were able to actually experimentally test it and confirm it. Did it feel like uncharted waters for you? Yes, well, um, it's very interesting. It's, it has its amusing aspects too, because uh, if you have an idea, uh, you have mixed feelings about whether it's uh, going to be proved in your existence. Because if you're right, it's great, but if you're wrong, it's not so good. <laughs> so, so um, but you're actually very anxious to see whether the evidence holds up. And um, we had to wait for a while because the technology for doing the kind of research necessary was developing. And uh, gene cloning was even a recent event. So uh, it wasn't until 1982 or three that uh, we had real evidence and support, but by 1986 or seven, we knew that it was correct because the second hit was shown to be mutation in the same gene. So this implies that uh, the disease occurs when there is no normal copy of a particular gene present. It... Your theoretical work provided much of the intellectual foundation for the tumor suppressor concept. What are your thoughts on how the field has evolved due to new technologies and where it's going in terms of identifying new tumor suppressor genes? Well, um, first of all, we have a large number of hereditary cancers. And um, after the cloning of the retinoblastoma gene, that was the first one to be cloned, I think we must have uh, over 30 or 40 now. So there are quite a few examples of um, hereditary cancer. 
um, developing the cancer patient develops the cancer when there is a second hit. Of course, the cancer doesn't stop at that point. It makes other events, too. Yeah. Dr. Knudsen, thank you so much. Quite welcome. <laughs>